As interest in biofuels increases, researchers are evaluating the potential of switchgrass and other perennial grasses to serve as a feedstock for fuels. While perennial grasses have been around for a long time, they have not frequently been grown on many acres as a monoculture. Shifting perennial grasses from a diverse environment to a monoculture creates new challenges for producers. One of these challenges is the risk of disease endemics. This is where plant pathologists such as Gary Ewan come into play. Plant pathologists specialize in organisms that infect plants and cause disease. These organisms include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and nematodes. In switchgrass grown in the central USA, however, we are most concerned about disease caused by viruses and fungi. While viruses and fungi can cause disease, it is also important to remember that the correct environment must be present for disease to occur. Without an environment that is favorable for pathogen dispersal and infection of the host, in this case switchgrass, the pathogen will fail to thrive. These three elements, a susceptible host, a virulent pathogen, and environment are referred to as the disease triangle. Dr. Ewan has found that the critical elements are in place for two destructive diseases in switchgrass. One is Panicum mosaic virus. The Panicum mosaic virus is known to cause yellow mottling and stunting. This stunting can significantly reduce yield. Along with Panicum mosaic virus, a second virus known as satellite virus can be found infecting the same plant. The satellite is a virus that can infect a switchgrass plant only if it is infected with Panicum mosaic virus. The satellite virus can compound the same symptoms of Panicum mosaic virus, causing even more severe modeling and stunting of plants. Unlike most plant viruses, Panicum mosaic virus does not have an insect vector. It is mechanically transmitted. That is one reason why the disease could potentially be destructive on switchgrass for biofuels. Each time the crop is harvested, there is potential for the virus to be spread and introduced into healthy plants. The best management practices to prevent the spread of the virus include cleaning the harvest equipment between fields and harvesting after a killing frost. Aside from Panicum mosaic virus, plant pathologists have also found rust, a fungal disease, in switchgrass research plots. There are two species of fungi that can cause rust in switchgrass, Puccinia immaculata and Euromyces graminicola. One species or the other, or both, might be causing the disease in any particular location. Symptoms caused by the two species are identical. They can be distinguished only by microscopic examination of their spores. The rust shown here is most likely caused by Euromyces graminicola, based on what was previously found in this field. The complex life cycles for the two switchgrass fungi are not yet known. Many rusts have a complex life cycle requiring infection of two very different, unrelated plant hosts to complete their cycle. Other rusts require only a single host species. Plant pathologists have not yet determined whether switchgrass rusts affect only switchgrass or also require an alternate host. The life cycles of rust fungi are further complicated by the fact that a single rust fungus can produce multiple spore stages, each serving a different function or infecting a different host. The switchgrass rust fungi appear as masses of uridemia spores on switchgrass leaves and stems from mid-June until late August. The rust red color of the spore masses, or pustules, gives the disease its name. Uridiospores are then released into the air to infect healthy switchgrass. The cycle can be repeated numerous times depending on the weather conditions. Beginning in mid-August, rust-infected switchgrass will begin to produce the black teleospore stage, changing the color of the pustules from rust red to coal black. Teleospores allow the fungus to survive harsh winter conditions in a dormant state. It is not yet known exactly how the switchgrass rust fungi transition from the teleospore stage to urodeospores in the following spring. 
the best management practices for rust include using resistant cultivars. Based on research conducted in the past and recent observations made on new switchgrass cultivars and breeding lines, there is considerable difference in resistance to rust. Fortunately, it appears that some new lines, including the newly released Liberty, show considerable resistance to rust. While distinctive symptoms have been reported for Panica mosaic virus and switchgrass rust, symptoms might vary depending on the environmental conditions and the host variety. It is often hard to predict what the symptoms of these diseases will look like on new switchgrass varieties since not much research has been done with these diseases on new varieties. Given that, plant pathologists rely on new molecular diagnostic tools. One method is called ELISA and is commonly used to accurately identify what virus is causing disease. ELISA is a test that uses antibodies to detect certain proteins specific to the kind of pathogen present. Using ELISA, researchers at the University of Nebraska recently detected Panica mosaic virus in some switchgrass breeding nurseries at frequencies exceeding 50%. The frequencies of plants exhibiting virus symptoms, however, were lower, and this suggests some plants can be symptom-free carriers of Panica mosaic virus. Currently, researchers in the SEN-USA project are working to learn more about these pathogens and how they affect switchgrass. To do this, they are using field plots for observations, lab techniques such as ELISA to accurately identify pathogens, and working with plant breeders to identify the most resistant cultivars. While these diseases could have significant impacts on switchgrass grown as a bioenergy crop, there is still plenty of potential for the crop. Researchers can help by continuing to learn more about these diseases in order to find resistant cultivars and develop best management practices for disease prevention and control.